Hello and welcome to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting video. In this video, we will be going over a more intermediate example of a multi-step income statement. So in this uh, multi-step income statement that we are about to do, we are going to assume that this is a parent company that perhaps owns one or more subsidiaries. And as a result, it's been consolidated. Now, this is not an instructional video on how to do a consolidated income statement. Instead, the whole reason why we're calling it consolidated is simply because I want to show this uh, non-controlling interest income portion. So for this video, if you would like to follow along, you can visit our website. All of our working sheets will be linked in the description below. So please be sure to pull that up, make a copy or download it to Excel and follow along. So when we're doing this consolidated income statement, the first thing that we want to answer is the sales minus sales discounts minus sales returns and allowances, right? So as you may be familiar with, the first thing we will always start with is that sales portion. And as we grab each item, I am going to go ahead and change the color so we know we have input that item. So sales, Eight million five hundred thousand. The first thing we want to remove from sales is our sales discounts and our sales returns and allowances. So let's put in our sales discounts and our sales returns and allowances. Now, if we're at the intermediate level, we should already know this, but keep in mind, these are not debits and credits. These are simply two columns to help with formatting and readability for the user. So in this case, I'm making a little bit of a list. So I'm going to put my sales discounts and sales returns and allowances off to the left-hand side, and I will net them to the right. So sales discounts, let's grab that first here, 13,000. and sales returns and allowances, 460,000. Now, if we net these two, we will see that the total of the two comes out to 473,000. And this is where we get our first formula that I was mentioning at the beginning, sales minus sales discounts and sales returns and allowances equals net sales. So there's our sales minus the sum of our two items, sales discounts and sales returns and allowances. That gives us net sales of 8,027,000. Now, as you're going through here, one thing that I am going to encourage is really good formatting. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I wanna make sure that these are all in commas. get rid of those decimals. But more importantly, I want to use math lines to make it easier for the user to navigate. So wherever I do math, I'm going to put a line underneath the preceding items. So for example, we have this first area here, which we did math, we added it up to the right. So let's put a line under there to show math. And then same thing here, I subtracted from the number above. So I'm going to put a line here as well. Next, from net sales, we are going to take away our cost of merchandise sold. And our cost of merchandise sold was 4,980,000. Now, notice I'm not moving into the left-hand side. That's because it's only one item, so I can keep it in the right, because my next formula is going to go straight into what it equals. Net sales, minus cost of merchandise sold equals my gross profit. That's another really important formula. Net sales minus cost of merchandise sold equals gross profit. And we see here that we are again doing math. So we are going to use a math line again to show that work. So the whole point of these math lines is to kind of separate out what we're doing as we work through the statement, right? It's going to be easier for the user to follow rather than if we just have a bunch of numbers and columns. 
Our next section is going to be our operating expenses. And sometimes what you'll notice when you're going through these types of problems is that they will list several selling expenses and several administrative expenses. Those are our two broad categories for operating expenses. Now, in this case, this problem was kind to us. They simply gave us the sum of all of our administrative expenses and all of our selling expenses, so we can put that right in. Again, we're making a list of operating expenses, so we're going to move to the left-hand side. So selling was 450,000 and administrative was 375,000. Okay. Next, let's go ahead and total those operating expenses. And again, we are doing math, so let's use a math line. If you printed this out, just go ahead and these uh, lines should be uh, basically light enough for you to take your pencil and put it right across. But here we're going to be adding up those operating expenses and we find that this company had total operating expenses of 825,000. Now, if you're in intermediate accounting, remember uh, the whole purpose of these operating expenses are these are the expenses that we incurred in order to generate these sales, right? So operating expenses are very different from other expenses, which we will see later. Now we have another formula that's very important. And this formula is gross profit minus our operating expenses, let's do a math line, equals income from operations. So just to kind of reiterate the, all the formulas we learned so far, sales minus our sales discounts and sales returns and allowances equals net sales. Net sales minus our cost of merchandise sold equals gross profit and gross profit minus all our total operating expenses equals our income from operations. So we've already gone through quite a few uh, areas in this income statement or of these accounts. Um, now we're going to start dealing with our quote unquote other areas. So it depends on what textbook you're using. Um, some textbooks like to separate our revenues and gains into one area and our losses and expenses into another. I'm going to use that format here. So we have our other revenues and gains. And we will list those here. Now, this kind of begs the question, what makes a revenue or gain a quote unquote other, right? And this is where we're differentiating between operating revenues and expenses and other revenues and expenses. Operating, like I was saying earlier when I was talking about operating expenses, are our day-to-day -day expenses that we incur in order to generate those sales. Other revenues and gains are revenues that we incur simply on the side, right? Uh, so for example, notice here we have this rent revenue. Uh, this company is called Pencils, Pens, and More. They're not in the business of renting items out, right? If we were a rental company, then any rent revenue would be our operating revenue. It would go up at the top of our income statement. But in this case, rent revenue, we probably have some spare space that we are simply renting out. Uh, for example, perhaps we have a big manufacturing plant where we manufacture all of our pens, pencils, and more. And maybe we have a lot in the back that we're not using. And for extra income for our company, we rent out that lot for people to park their boats and RVs. I know, just an example. But that would be an example of an other revenue. It's not why we are in business. It's side income for the business. Another example would be this dividend revenue. So obviously it's not an investment company. They're earning this revenue just simply because of their investments. It's not why they are in business. So let's put in that rent revenue and that dividend revenue. Our rent revenue was 120,000. Dividend revenue, 36,000. Let's total those up to the side. Okay. 
And if we add that to what we had for our income from operations, we'll get a subtotal. We could label this subtotal if we'd like. But I want to move right on to our other expenses and losses. In this case, we have one interest expense. So since I'm not making a list, I'm going to put it all the way over on the right hand side. And that is an expense, so obviously we are going to have to subtract that from our subtotal. And this will end up being called income before income tax. All right, we're making some progress here. Now our next section is going to be our income tax. You might say, okay, well, we have some gains and losses and some net income attributable to our NCI, our non-controlling interest. We will deal with those later. Let's first take our income tax. To find our income tax, we take our income before income tax and multiply it by whatever tax rate is given. And then if we remove that income tax, we will be left with our income from continuing operations. Perfect. Now, our next section that we are going to conquer is discontinued operations. So discontinued operations isn't just any discontinuation of operations. It's supposed to be a significant portion of the company's business, right? Um, now, this problem doesn't really specify that it is significant, but I'm going to make a pretty safe assumption here for pencils, pens, and more that uh, the green pen division is probably significant for them. So when we put in these two, this gain from disposal of green pen division and loss from operations of discontinued green pen division, we are going to do this net of tax for both. And since we are making a little bit of a list here, um, I am going to put it in the left-hand side. Now, when we are doing something net of tax, we are going to take the number, so let's take the gain, and we multiply it by one minus the tax rate. The reason why we do this is because we already recorded the tax up above. So we are taking out the tax that we would have incurred or would have saved from these two. Okay, once we have those two, we are going to net those off to the side. It's going to be a negative. And then when we take those out, we'll be left with our consolidated net income. And last but not least is our non-controlling interest. So this consolidated net income is the net income of the parent and any companies that we own 50% or more of. Now, if we don't outright own 100%, then there are other shareholders who own a percentage and we want to remove that non-controlling interest net income from our net income because that's going to basically differentiate our portion that we own from the other. So in this case, let's see, we already did these. And we don't need that tax rate anymore. Our net income attributable to non-controlling interest, let's less that. That's 56,000 and we are going to remove that so we only get to see net income attributable to pencils, pens, and more. All right, so this is a more advanced version of what you might see for a multi-step income statement. Um, there's a lot of different components and probably the hardest part is going to be practicing each individual section, right? So first gross profit sec or first net sales section, gross profit section, uh, your income from operations, income before income tax, income before continuing operations, consolidated net income, and then overall net income attributable to pencils, pens, and more. All right, so please make sure to practice this. Give it a little bit more. We'll add some more practice on our website. 
Uh, please make sure to subscribe. And until next time, happy studying. Good work.